scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. And you see, the higher you rise, just like Pastor was saying, many people begin to depend on your continuity. When you are, it, it becomes wickedness at a certain level to plateau because now you are not living for yourself alone. So many people are drawing their inspiration. Someone is depending on your message to find the sermon for his own church. Someone is depending on your, your, the dexterity in your business. Preachers are depending on how good you are in your fashion so we dress well. Don't backslide for our sake. Are, are you learning now? Yes. The passion to learn. Pastor, I submit to you, and I do this with every sense of respect and responsibility. Many preachers are lazy. I repeat, many preachers are lazy. Five minutes Bible study, casual stumbling into a video oh it's two minutes let me listen to it you don't command power and command influence that way it takes intention and aggression don't pity your mind when it has to do with growth your mind is not tired give it the information that it will use to create your reality by the truth it says sell it not Please, let's obtain grace from God to be disciplined. God is not a herbalist. He will not commit certain levels of graces and anointings, you know. And sometimes I say this with every sense of humility. When people see some of the things that God is doing, they just think all that is making it happen is just the anointing and just luck. <laughs> he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully nobody wins the olympic by mistake you can get to the field by mistake please hear what i'm telling you it takes intention and let me tell you something with knowledge when you have it you have gotten it you don't fear again you can lay hold on this truth i submit to you that knowledge drives fear Fear is derived from ignorance. Fear is derived from ignorance. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very important. You must obtain grace from God with passion and with intention. Obtain grace from God to go for knowledge. Continuous learning. Continuous learning. Continuous learning. First Timothy chapter 4 from verse 15 and 16. 1 Timothy 4, 15 and 16. Very quickly. 1 Timothy 4, 15 and 16. 1 Timothy chapter 4 from verse 15 and 16. Do not forget what we are teaching. It says, meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely or wholly to them that your progress may be evident to all meditate on these things king james says give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all 
There is a relationship between lack of study and shame. It says study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Someone needs to be inspired this afternoon. I'm tired of celebrating and recycling ignorance. It's time for me to rise to a higher level. You have to outsource intelligence and information beyond your current horizon. Can I tell you, if you celebrate mediocrity, a time will come all the people that follow you will have nothing to learn from you again. There is a level of leadership called leadership by results. People will not follow you indefinitely. The dexterity of your result, which is a testament of your knowledge, has to be what would drive people to keep following you. Someone say knowledge. You have to commit to continuous development, continuous learning. Number three, very quickly. This is a very powerful one. What is the third key to continue and to remain? You must build systems and structures that protect your focus and protect your values. You must build systems and structures that protect your focus and protect your values. Systems and structures. Because when you begin to command results, when you begin to advance producing notable results, listen very carefully. There are many things that begin to happen around your life. Distractions, challenges, persecutions, etc. But one of the things that happen, listen, when you begin to succeed, there are many legitimate things that will come into your life and your space and it can be distracting. You have to create systems and structures to manage important things that can distract you acts chapter 6 something began to happen when the early church started advancing on the day of pentecost three thousand people were saved and then they kept having people the church was growing multiplying great results and watch what happened now in those days what days those days of advancement those days of exploits the bible says when the number of the disciples was what multiplication has a serious effect most of you your prayer for increase is not answered because the structure to manage the things that come when increase comes is not there now in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying the bible says there arose a complaint there will always be conflict. There will always be issues that will arise. Legitimate issues that require your intelligence. And before you know it, you will be distracted from what brought you to that level. There arose a complaint against the Hebrews. Please go to KJV so that we can understand. Now the Bible says that the Grecians and the Hebrews now started having issues. Why? because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration so now they were blessed enough to even minister to widows verse 2 we're reading to verse 4 then the 12 called the multitude of the disciples that means the 12 were now not the only disciples they had raised other disciples structure and systems they raised Okay, they called the multitudes of the disciples unto them and said, now hear this carefully. It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. My question is, is serving tables wrong? Remember, that's how they started. They started by serving tables. Now the responsibility upon them, they cannot combine the ministry of the word and serving tables. Listen carefully. The twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Verse 3. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, 
full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Can you see the condition to serve tables in the early church? This is the condition for ministry in our day. And yet this was what they needed to go through to be qualified to serve tables. Full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom whom we may appoint over this business. Read verse 4 together. Let's read in concert. Are you ready? One, two, read. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. The third key. You must create systems and structures that protect your focus and your values. Increase comes with a plethora of side effects. One of it is distraction from your vision. And let me tell you this. We must obtain grace from God because most leaders have trust issues. And legitimately so. If you have survived in any organization, in ministry or business for a while, I'm sure your heart would have been battered by the reality of the human nature. And chances are excellent that when you go through several disappointments, it becomes difficult to trust people. This is where distraction comes from. The man of God, the businessman wants to do everything. You have five outlets of your business. You want to manage everything by yourself. You don't know that you are growing older. You don't know that you may not be able to have that capacity to stand. But we will give ourselves continually. There are many people who started as ministers of the gospel and right now have become administrators. They are concerned about the details of the finances, legitimately so. Details of this and that and the core ministry from whence the grace came that announced them, they have left it. There are many things that I don't put my hands into so that I can focus on this. Many of you right now, I will tell you where your spiritual fatigue is coming from. There are certain levels, there are certain duties that are for the people you have raised, not you again. To create systems and structures that protect your focus and protect your vision. Closely related to this, I wish I had all the time. When God begins to lift you, beware of the people who come in the spirit and power of the young girl who came to meet the apostles. They come with strange spirits, not necessarily demonic spirits. A strange spirit means one that is inconsistent with your vision and the pattern given to you. You must have the courage to drive good people from your life. Just because they are good does not mean they are useful. There are unnecessary baggages we carry because of emotions. There are many good people who cannot enter certain seasons in your life. Ask every leader here, they will tell you. There is a height a plane cannot get to when the load is so much. The lighter, the higher it flies. You need to decongest your life and unclog your life by and with so many things let me tell you for many of us we don't have the courage to be controversial unfortunately it is a requirement to remain if you are too scared of being controversial forget about leading the field hmm. are we blessed systems and structures that protect your focus protect your vision One time I had a group of people and they just said they were coming to my house. Uh, they wanted to come and give an award. I've heard about them. They are very treacherous people. When I heard about them, they said, oh, they're coming. I said, no, 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 I appreciate them. Please carry your award and leave me. I know exactly what they are looking for. They prey on reputations. Anything that looks like a ladder, they climb on it. Let me tell you, be a, beware of many good things. When the devil knows you are conscious of evil, he will use good and destroy you. That tree was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Both the good there and the evil can still do the same thing. There are many good things you have to say no to. To honor your pursuit. I'm sorry to use this expression, but believers prostitute themselves to anything that looks like it can be an addition. And let me tell you when, you, when you move like that, you will not be able to grow. 
all things are lawful but not all things are expedient the discipline of being consistent this is what god has called me to do i focus on it with determination are we together your pastor wakes up every morning to lead several people to pray you know the discipline it takes to do that it's more than grace it takes discipline your mind your alarm clock your discipline the vision that is before you there are times where you literally have to carry yourself up there are times i've traveled where my sleep will be in the plane the only thing i know is that we lifted it's when we're landing and sometimes i'm sleeping and sleeping and maybe the person close to me is just looking at me and i'm showing their mind they'll be saying, ah, this man you are not an old man why are you sleeping like this depends on what you are carrying if you are carrying a cap you can leave it there and even be shaking your head but if what you are carrying is something that feeds nation sometimes you will need to rest there are many good things we need to prune in our lives right now leave the evil things you've overcome that let's talk about good things that are not profitable groups associations be careful be careful champions are champions because they minimize their lives to the necessary so that it can sharpen their focus are we together there are things you need to start delegating people to do if god trusted you while you are changing trust others too it's better for them to fail in your presence you can correct them than to out of fear allow the work to become terrible because you are protecting your reputation it's better for your sons and daughters to make the mistake while you are alive see them rebuke them cover correct correct again till they learn jesus did not wait for perfection before giving us the holy ghost he sent us we keep metamorphosing on the job you must have the courage to trust people apostle you don't know what happened all right sorry i i understand now but you have to summon the courage delegate some things and unclog your life so that your focus can be with precision this is one of the reasons why we have to pray that god will send strong financial helpers because you know sir everybody here will agree with me that one of the most distracting things when you now start rising and building structures is this finance thing we will not leave the ministry of the word and come to be serving tables hallelujah let me do a quick recap then i'll talk about the last one number one humility the stamina to continue is derived from a life of humility number two continuous learning and improvement number three building systems and structures that protect your focus and your values this is very important first corinthians chapter 3 we'll read from verse 9 to 13 very quickly and then the last point and we're done second corinthians chapter 3 from verse 9 it says for we are laborers together with god second corinthians not chronicles first corinthians i meant to say my apologies first corinthians 3 from verse 9 first corinthians 3 from verse 9 for we are laborers together with god ye are god's husbandry you are god's building verse 10 we're reading to 13 verse 10 now it says according to the grace of god which is given to me as a wise master builder i have laid the foundation and another builder thereon it says but let every man take heed how he builded thereon verse 11 for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid he said which is christ jesus reading to 13 verse 12 now it says now if any man build upon this foundation gold silver precious stones wood hay stubble last verse every man's work shall be made manifest and it says for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is the fire that comes from men 
the fire that comes from the vicissitudes of life it will try your ministry i guarantee you it will try your business but it is the house that is built on the rock that stands may everything you are involved with stand in the name of jesus christ write the various things that take your time and find out which of them you can begin to raise people around you listen if you are a leader at a certain level and you've not raised anybody around you it means you are doing something wrong everybody cannot be wrong there has to be someone that trusts you and believes you enough for you to be able to replicate yourself in them number four The power to continue, the power to remain, is derived from the ministry of prayer and intercession. Prayer and intercession. Prayer and intercession. In addition to putting systems and structures that protect your focus and protect your values, you must engage strategically in the ministry of prayer and intercession luke chapter 5 from verse 15 luke chapter 5 from verse 15 we'll read 15 and 16 luke chapter 5 now look at this story very interesting story about jesus the bible says but so much the more went there a fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed of him now, this was a celebrity making progress. The Bible says his fame had gone abroad. Great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed. Next verse, the Bible says in verse 16, And he withdrew himself in the midst of the multitudes, in the midst of the glamour, in the midst of the wonderful things that happened. He withdrew himself into the wilderness. And the Bible says, And prayed he withdrew himself and prayed please let's rise and honor our father is that the best you can do hallelujah most welcome sir thank you amen are we together so the bible says let's go to verse 15 again to put it in context it says but so much the more went a fame abroad of him and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed of him making progress already and yet the bible says he had the stamina and the wisdom verse 16 the bible now says he withdrew himself the Bible didn't say he went to pray. He withdrew himself. It took effort and intention. Knowing that this is the secret that brought me thus far. And even in the midst of the fame and the glamour, it would take energy. But he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Prayer and intercession. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2. When you get to certain levels of growth, you have to pray. He said, brethren, pray for us. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2. This must be the prayer of every great man. Because the moment Isaac begins to be great, the Philistines will come. They will envy what you represent. And it has nothing to do with whether you are good or bad. It's the side effect of consistency. The Bible says, finally, brethren, Pray for us. Why? Number one, that the word of God may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Number two, the second reason is that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. Nehemiah, if you are building, Sambalat and Tobias will come. You don't have to call them. Your result has a voice. It does not just call those who need it. It calls naysayers. It will call any kind of person. And that we may be delivered. That means they can have an effect on you if you don't pray. 
most people downplay what the devil can do using men and systems and structures to sabotage the purposes of God in your life. He said he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. Don't you think as a man of God that you are going around bringing deliverance, setting people free by the power of God's word and the devil will fold his arms and watch you. Not even Jesus was spared. Satan cometh to me, he said. When he left Jesus after the temptation, the Bible says he left him for a season. He went to re-strategize because weapons are fashioned. They don't just come. He said no weapon fashion. To fashion a weapon requires study. It has to study. What have you left in your training? That becomes the weapon that is used. If you neglected finances as you are learning ministry, the weapon will be fashioned after that lapse. It was where Goliath did not cover. That was where David used to bring him down. That we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. And he leaves you with an information. All men, including the ones in your church, including the ones everywhere, the moment you have a multitude, he says, have this at the back of your mind, that all men have not faith. Even if you preach on rapture every day, there are people who do not have faith. Their hearts have been seared with hot iron. There will be easy praise for the devil to use. Men of God must pray. Business people must pray because you are in ministry. Are we blessed? Last scripture and then we'll pray. Matthew chapter 26 from verse 39. Matthew 26 and verse 39. Jesus is teaching here. Matthew 26 the Bible says he went a little further Jesus now and fell on his face and prayed saying oh my father if it be possible let this cup pass from me nevertheless not as I will but as thou wilt verse 40 and he cometh to the disciples and he found them asleep and saith unto them what could ye not watch with me one hour? 41. Watch and pray, he said, that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, ever willing, he says, but the flesh is weak. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. When you start your journey, it's easy to keep going unhindered. But when you get to a certain height and a certain level, the Philistines will come. I assure you, the Bible says the Philistines came and they envied him. They envied him on account of the brightness of his rising. Let's wrap up with that scripture. Genesis 26, 13 to 16. It's one thing to start but it takes another kind of dynamics to continue. And the man began to prosper. That is a level. And he continued prospering until he became. Until he became. Until he became. The man began to prosper until he became that epitome. Of prosperity and the Bible says verse 14 now he had possessions of flocks possessions of herds and a great number of servants and it did not just end there there were also other things that he had that he didn't have before the troubles that come from the Philistines the Philistines envied him they sent him and they said leave us for you are mightier than we Your success will always create a reaction in the realm of the spirit. And Satan will use men and systems and structures. But the Bible says, now thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. Always. Thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. My charge to us this afternoon as I wrap up is that it is not enough to start many of us here have done well we have started ministries we've started businesses we've started several things that we work in keeping with these keys god is not only 
the beginning he is also the end it takes grace to continue the grace for humility the grace for continuous learning and development hallelujah the grace for creating systems and structures that protect your focus and protect your vision and finally the power of prayer and intercession you hold these keys as the keys of the kingdom and with them you will be able to remain that even when everything has shaken and everything is moving haywire at the end of it you will still stand because you are building on a rock are we blessed whilst you are seated i want you to pray in one minute and ask the lord to grant you the grace he says now that you know these things happy are you if you do them now that you know these things happy are you if you do them it is not just the hearers that receive but those who hear and do is someone praying let it be from the depth of your heart you are crying out to god lord i desire to remain producing results in spite of the sambalats the tobiases i desire to remain in spite of the philistines i obtain grace that i will advance and i will continue now that i have begun grant me the grace to continue that my results will be sustained decades from now it will be sustained by engaging the truth of the kingdom someone is receiving grace and pray and say lord by the privilege of the graces here including the grace of our father that will be coming shortly that you open up your spirit and say there is no excuse for remaining at this level let it come as a prophetic push that will shift us into new levels and new dimensions the bible says go to them that sell and buy there are those who sell and you buy with humility you buy with meekness you buy with humbleness of heart hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.